properties of exponents. To define exponent notation, the base is the number that is going to be multiplied to itself, and the exponent is how many times you multiply the base to itself. The first definition is every thing has an exponent of 1. Whether it's a variable or a number, everything, every base has an exponent of 1. Just like the coefficient 1, you won't see the exponent 1. So a number has an exponent of 1, and a quantity that's raised to a power 1 is just simply what the quantity is. Everything has an exponent of 1, or if you have to simplify something that has the exponent of 1, it's simply the basis. Next property is anything raised to the 0 power equals 1. Anything raised to the 0 power equals 1. If I have 5 to the 0 power, it equals 1, not 5. If I have a quantity raised to a 0 power, it equals 1, okay? Be careful when 0 power is mixed into a problem, because if I have x to the 0 power, but I have y squared, that x to the 0 power is being multiplied to y squared. The x to the 0 means 1, and it's 1 times y squared, so therefore I get y squared as my answer. When you have something to the 0 power mixed in, the only thing that equals the 1 is the base with the 0 power. And when it's multiplication, you're multiplying by 1, so you're simply going to get what you're multiplying to, which is that y squared in this case. Pause and try. That x to the 0 power equals 1. We have multiplication here. It's 2 times 1. So my solution here, when I simplify, would be 2. Pause and try. The whole entire quantity is raised to the 0 power. Therefore, this equals 1. Our next property is the multiplication property. And when we have like bases being multiplied together, what you do to simplify is you take the exponents and you add them together. So when you have something like this, where you have 2 to the 4th power times 3 to the 3rd power, we need to simplify. And the way to simplify here, because they're like bases, and the base is 2, I'm going to add the exponent, so I end up getting 2 to the 7th power. Be very careful when there's numbers involved and not just variables, because we have a tendency to want to multiply the numbers together first and then add the exponents, but that is incorrect, because order of operation states exponent has to go first and then you multiply. So that's why in this case, you have to add the exponents together with that like base. And then you could actually multiply it out by using 2 to the 7th power. So be careful when you have numbers as bases and they're raised to powers. In this case, you see I have z to the 6 times z. Don't miss that exponent of 1. z has an exponent of 1, but we won't see the exponent of 1. So we need, when we multiply together, to keep in mind that if we have a base, then we do have an exponent, and that exponent would be 1. So when I simplify this, I'm going to end up with z to the 7th power. Pause and try. Should have gotten 3 to the power. Pause and try. In this case, remember that x has the power of 1, so we should get x to the 9th power. Our next uh, example that we're working with is just a combination where we have basis with powers and we have multiplication. Now, multiplication is multiplication. When you have numbers that are being multiplied, you multiply the numbers. So that 3 is being multiplied to 7. And then the like bases with the powers, you would add the powers together to simplify. 
But don't forget, multiplication is multiplication. You need to multiply numbers together. 3 times 7 will be 21. And then like bases, you add the exponents. You end up getting k to the 8th power. When there's a multiple things going on, be careful. Make sure the numbers get multiplied together. And like bases, you add the exponents. So in this case, I end up getting 12 times 2, which is 24. And then x squared times x, which really has a power of 1. You get x to the third. And then y to the fifth. Pause and try. You should have gotten negative 2 times 4. And then you have x times x to the fifth, which will give us a negative 8 x to the sixth. Pause and try. In this case, we will get 3x to the 10th, y to the 8th. Very important that you put the number in front. It's a coefficient. And we have division of like bases. The division property is you will subtract the exponents. And you don't want a negative exponent, so you're always going to subtract where the highest exponent. So if the highest exponent is on top, You'll have a whole number or a whole part, and you'll subtract, and it'll leave it on top. But if the highest exponent is in the bottom or the denominator, you will subtract, and you will end up with a fraction. So it's very important that when you do division, you're subtracting, but you're leaving where the higher exponent is. And if the higher exponent's on the bottom and nothing is left up top, you need to put a 1 over it so that it represents that fraction. Here's an example. We have x to the fifth over x to the third. It's division. The highest exponent's on top, so I'm going to subtract the 3 from the 5, and it's going to end up being x to the second power. So the higher exponent's on top. When I simplify, I get x to the second. When I have y to the fifth over y to the eighth, it's division. And I have to subtract the exponents. But because the highest exponent is on the bottom, I'm going to subtract, and it's going to stay on the bottom. So we end up getting 1 over y to the third. Now, when you have the same thing over the same thing, this is that property of 1. So again, if I subtract the exponents here, I'm going to end up getting a 0 power. And anything raised to 0 power equals 1. And also, the division property for fractions is when you have the same thing over the same thing, it equals 1. So this is where the 0 property comes into play. When you have something raised to 0 power, it equals 1. When you divide the same thing over the same thing, you get 1. Pause and try. Should have gotten x to the fourth. And again, the higher exponent's on the top. So you end up with a whole part, x to the fourth. Pause and try. The higher exponent's on the bottom, so I'm subtracting, and it's going to stay on the bottom. I get 1 over z to the sixth. Pause and try. Again, it's like bases, so you're going to use the division property. You're going to subtract exponents, and you're going to end up with 15 to the 1 power, which is 15. This is a combination. Whenever we have a combination, I like to separate it into three separate problems and simplify piece by piece. So by doing this, because it's division, I like to write my division line. And then I just look at piece by piece and simplify and put it where it belongs on this line. So when I look at the first piece, again, be very careful. It is a fraction that needs to be reduced. We're not subtracting here. It is a fraction that needs to be reduced. 5 over 15 will reduce to 1 third. And then I look at the next piece. And the higher exponent's on the bottom, so I'm going to subtract, and it's going to stay on the bottom. And because I already have the 1 up top, I don't put another 1 up top. Once something's left up top, you don't need to put anything else. 
So when I subtract, I'm going to put it on the bottom. And then the last piece, I see the higher exponents on top, and I'm going to subtract, and it's going to stay on top. So when I simplify, this is what it would look like. Now, because we don't have a coefficient of 1, or we don't see the coefficient of 1, I'm going to take that 1 on the top out of my answer because I have y to the 6th on the top. So that's how I would write my answer. Pause and try. And I'm writing my line. I'm simplifying the 3 ninths, and it's going to be 1 third. And then the x to the third, x squared, the higher exponents on top, I'm going to subtract, and it's going to stay up top. So I get x. And then the y over y to the third, I subtract, and it's going to be y squared on the bottom. And you don't want to leave that 1 with the x, so you end up getting your x over 3y squared. When you're solving this, do it piece by piece. Make sure the numerical part is a fraction that needs to be reduced. Pause and try. In this case, I write my line, and I do the 8 divided by 2. 8 divided by 2 is going to be a whole number. It's going to be 4, so it's going to be on top. And then I see my x to the fifth over x to the fourth. The higher exponent's on top. I subtract, and I leave it on top. And then y to the 0 power equals 1. And 1 times anything will just be what you have. So I end up just getting 4x. And I don't have it over anything, so my answer is simply 4x. This is the power to a power property. And when you have a quantity raised to a power, and what's inside has a power, to simplify, you're going to take the two powers and multiply them together. So power to a power, you multiply the powers. So in this case, you have w to the sixth power raised to the fourth power. Well, to simplify here, I'm taking the two powers and multiplying them together. So I get w to the 24th power. Here we have s to the 0 power raised to the fourth power. Well, when I multiply the powers together here, 0 times 4, 0 times 4 is going to equal 0. Therefore, my solution will be 1, because I still have s to the 0 power. Pause and try. So you get 5 to the 15th power here. Pause and try. You get x to the 18th power. Now the next property is the power of a product. We have a quantity raised to a power. When we have a quantity raised to a power, you're going to take that power on the outside, and you're going to give it to everything inside. So in this case, I have a quantity xy, and it's raised to the second power. To simplify, I need to take that power on the outside and give it to everything inside. So I end up getting x squared, y squared. Be careful when you have a quantity raised to a power, and inside you have a number. That number needs to get that power. Don't miss the numerical part. So when I do this, I'm going to end up getting 2 to the third power, x to the third power. Now you're going to need to simplify the 2 to the third power. And remember, 2 to the third power means I have 2 times 2 times 2, which will multiply to 8. So when you have a numerical part and a quantity to a power, you're going to have to take that power and give it to the number. And then you're going to have to evaluate it. So you end up getting 80x to the third power. Be very careful here not to fall into that problem of taking the number and just multiplying it to the power and getting 6 instead of 8. It is 2 to the third power. It's not 2 times 3. So be very careful when you're doing the evaluation. Pause and try. Again, we have 3 to the third power, z to the third power. And then I evaluate 3 to the third power as 27z to the third power. Pause and try. In this case, you should have gotten 25x squared, y squared.